The definitions for the standard enthalpy changes we will use are important because the value of the enthalpy changes are given for specific numbers of moles and we'll need to know whether to multiply these up in our Hess cycles. For combustion, the standard enthalpy change refers to one mole of a substance being burnt in excess oxygen under standard conditions of 298 Kelvin, which is 25 degrees C, and 101 kilopascals, which is one atmosphere. The standard enthalpy change of formation refers to one mole of a substance being formed from its elements, each in the state they would be found in under standard conditions. These definitions are reflected in the balanced equations. Burning heptane in excess oxygen produces carbon dioxide and water only. To balance the equation we need 11 moles of oxygen and we get 7 moles of carbon dioxide and 8 moles of water. Each needs to be shown in their correct states at 25 degrees C and 1 atmosphere. In the same way, if we form 1 mole of water from hydrogen and oxygen molecules, then we need 1 mole of hydrogen and half a mole of oxygen. Note that we can't multiply the numbers up in front to get rid of the fraction. The definition says this is the enthalpy change for making one mole of water, not two. Now we're ready to construct a Hess cycle to work out the enthalpy change of combustion of heptane. Here we have to be careful. Although the question talks about combustion, it's the enthalpy change data that determines what kind of Hess cycle we will draw. And the data is all enthalpy changes of formation, so we need a formation Hess cycle. Always check the data table to know what kind of Hess cycle to draw. We start with the reaction we want to calculate the energy change for on top of the Hess cycle. Because we have enthalpy change of formation data, we need the elements from which all these substances can be made on the bottom. It doesn't matter which side of the equation you balance it for, atoms are conserved during a reaction. Now upward pointing arrows, enthalpy changes of formation go from the elements to the compounds. That's why we don't need an arrow to the oxygen on the top line. It's an element, so there has been no enthalpy change to form it. And now we can add the enthalpy change data. We're forming 1 mole of heptane, so 1 times minus 224.4. 7 moles of carbon dioxide, so 7 times minus 393.5. And 8 moles of water, so 8 times minus 285.9. So now we calculate delta H by adding the enthalpy changes around the cycle from heptane and oxygen to the elements and then from the elements to carbon dioxide and water. To get from heptane and oxygen to the elements we're going in the opposite direction to the arrow. Another consequence of Hess's law is that the energy change in the opposite direction has the same value but the opposite sign so we need plus 224.4 kilojoules per mole in this case. Now from the elements to carbon dioxide we go in the same direction as the arrow, so we add minus 2754.5 kilojoules per mole, and for the water we add minus 2287.2 kilojoules per mole. That gives us a total enthalpy change for the combustion of one mole of heptane of minus 4817.3 kilojoules per mole. It's always good to check that your answer makes sense. We know combustion reactions are exothermic, releasing heat energy, so we were expecting a negative value for delta H. In fact, the data book value for the enthalpy change of combustion of heptane is minus 4816.9 kilojoules per mole, so we can be confident that we got this one right.